Hi, my name is John Liu, and I'm presenting Check Yourself Before You Wreck Yourself, ensuring quality with AI and developments in the context of smart devices. So, who am I? Uh, I really like uh, trying out new early technologies, Bitcoin in 2011, NFTs in 2017, and uh, I worked at Stargaze, working on their smart contracts. And if you're not familiar with my work, uh, I contribute a lot to the smart contracts that are currently in production. So launchpad, randomized minting, marketplace, names, and uh, so forth. So what's this talk about today? Uh, there's a few things that it's not. So, a few disclaimers first. I'm not a lawyer, this is not financial advice, I'm not an AI expert, and I'm not a security expert. Uh, but if, if you are, just, you, know, you can talk later. Uh, and also, this talk is not about the technical details of LLMs. Don't have time for that. And if you're new to AI and GPT, I would highly recommend you uh, start using with uh, Midjourney, the uh, text to image generator. So I want you guys to take away a few things from today's talk. Uh, we're going to go through a bunch of different practical examples. We want to go through a bunch of ways to improve prompting and look at the responses from LLMs. And from that prompting, get much more productivity from LLMs. And I'd like for you to take a few things back and try them. Out. So there's a lot of ways to train LLMs depending on your budget. And uh, I do not have hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, I don't have tens of thousands of dollars to throw at this. So we're mostly focused on prompting uh, and top 10 essential for the two days talk. And we're going to go through a few different examples. Uh, so AI is really hyped up right now, but there's actually a bunch of different use cases for it. And for today, we're going to go through four different examples. Um, summarizing, generating working code, and looking at smart contracts to see if it was heard for So the first example we're going through is a Discord summarizer. And it's a big problem because uh, working at Stargaze, there's a lot of different people and a lot of different channels, like 200 channels, uh, 10,000 users, maybe next year, 100,000, let's see. And uh, the process is pretty simple for uh, summarizing Discord. Basically, you get all the chats from Discord, you free process it, you add it into a prompt template, and then get the results if they're good enough, then display them. So for a first try, just try something simple. Summarize this chat with thousands of different chat blocks. And you get something like this. And it's pretty decent because you're turning thousands of different chats into six conversations. But there's room for improvement because those chats, like, you don't know why they were picked. Like, six out of a thousand, is, is that a good sample? And you'll know when it was set or why they were selected. So it's kind of useful, but you don't really know the criteria that's being used to judge uh, these specific chats. So I tried to improve this part, and we'll analyze it a little bit list three things. So instead of like six or maybe 20, it lists a specific amount 
and it scans through all the different chats and tries to pick ones that it deems most important. And it also tries to give you what it learned from these conversations. And then also attribution. So one quote and one author. And you end up with something like this. And you can read the topic, community engagement and interaction, and then the quote, who it's by, and what was learned from this conversation. So if you can't see it, it's a little bit. And this gives you a, a much better bird's eye view of what's going on in the community. So instead of thousands of chats, now you have a handful. And you're turning an attention to a time problem into a data problem. And that's a recurring theme with a lot of us. So this next example is generating the GPT-4. And we're going to go through a bunch of different prompt optimizations. And uh, the problem that I was having is thousand thousand smart contracts, they're split up into multiple files. So contract, debug, uh, error, message, query, and so forth. And I'm kind of lazy, so I just merged them all together into one file. And I thought it was a good example for GPT to do because it's a simple task and it's Rust, so if it compiles, it probably works. And it's also kind of a tedious form task. So I didn't want to do it myself. And let's dissect this prompt a little bit. If you ask GPT, like, design this Rust program, here are the requirements. It'll give you an average answer. So there's a few things we can do to improve the performance. So number one is role play. You're role playing it to answer as if it were a coding expert. And if you have this magic phrase, like think through the process step by step, then it ends up using a lot more inference time to answer the question. And inference time often has a direct relationship with the code output before quality. And then correctly working less code uh, on space. So the model knows that I want to get some sort of working less code out of this. And when I first got the code, and uh, you can see all the working code in the entire box in uh, the GitHub repo. When I got the working code, I put it into a cargo project, and then I did a cargo run, and it had this error. So there's something wrong with the cargo tunnel. So then instead of trying to fix it myself, I re-asked GPT and tried to fix it. So this uh, technique is reflection, basically make it look at the code again and ask if it's working, ask if the libraries actually exist. And it works pretty well. Apologies for the confusion in order to use blah, 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 add it to the tunnel file. Then uh, it didn't work, so I asked again, uh, does this code comply? And upon further reflection, oh, there's a potential bug. Here's a working code. And it ended up producing uh, working code. And this one is in uh, uvro cw slash vitamin. And it's great for querying and using code, especially positive and positive code in Vitamins. And I'm actually using this for the oh, uh, security challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's my typical day at Stargate is try to ship things fast. There's a lot of different priorities. And you kind of forget about security, which is pretty bad for, for smart contracts. So I want to see if GPT-4 could find Cosmos and Fox. 
And I thought this repo from Sushi Mushi. Uh, I think that person works at Oprah, but I'm not sure. And it's a really basic Cosmos bug. And uh, to zoom in, uh, this bug is like deposit this into an account and then update the balance. So the bug is uh, iterating through the vector for a D amount of Cosmo, but it only adds the amount from the first one. So what you can end up doing is sending a vector once like this, where you have a DMOM, UM, YR, or whatever, and then 10,000 of uh, that amount. And then you OSMO with a smaller amount. And then you end up getting a balance of 1,000 from your OSMO. So when I tried to uh, prompt you before, this was the response. It, it found it pretty much right away. It, it didn't give the exact answer, but including that the deposit was broken, there's something wrong with info funds, and you should look into uh, the new Osmo, uh, the DNOM and amount published. So it found a simple bug, but can it find bugs in production? So this is like the big boss of GPT-4. We'll see if it's up for the challenge. So uh, I dealt with a bunch of different uh, issues with this example. So we'll get into these issues a little bit later in the example. But uh, stochastic responses, meaning you prompt the same exact thing, but it gives you different responses. And then the context window, uh, you're often fighting the token limits for these uh, large smart contracts with many dependencies. And then also it hallucinates AKA flies. And also it can give you misleading answers that basically just waste your time. So uh, this one is in Launchpad for Public Awesome. And uh, what this code does is it's a mentor that uh, checks before minting if the user has over the uh, per address limit. Uh, and it does that by putting CW721 uh, for the header. But there, there's a few different issues with this. Uh, number one is max per address limit is 30, and the max per address limit for the minter might be over 30. And then you end up an unbounded number of minutes. And also, uh, it checks the owner, the current owner of the NFT. So if you mint and then transfer it to another wallet and then mint again, then you can cycle through and mint limited NFTs without limit. So yeah, the users have unlimited minting if they know how to construct this space. So the first problem I had was uh, the Minter code base, SG721, CW721, CW721 base. It took up way too many tokens, and it gave me a context too large error. So I tried to narrow this code down a little bit, and I just bring it to the most relevant portions of this code related to the bug, and will it find so it shows the current input, and basically it comes down to uh, a few different files. The execute messages for Minter SG721 uh, for minting, and then the query for the uh, owner query and the next one. So the first response I got from GPT-4 is the code follows good practices. Well, uh, thank you but uh, it doesn't find the vulnerability, so it's wrong. So let's try again, and maybe I'll get different results. So the second response I got from the robotic contract, here are some potential areas of... And 
if you look at this, race conditions, oracles, centralization, arbitrary limits. Uh, so it's not the bug I had in mind, and it's not that useful in general. Uh, centralization, you can say that about the smart contract. So it's kind of like wasting time. Uh, so it's not like so let's try this one more time. Last five. So on the third response, same exact prompt, uh, same exact contract input, potential incorrect account of tokens. So success. And uh, here's part of the output that I got from GPT. And you can see this zoomed in. A user can make more than the defined per address. So to wrap up the uh, fourth example, it ended up finding the bug after multiple tries. It made up a bunch of bugs that didn't really exist. Uh, and I had to deal with the context window, the uh, token limits, and stochastic responses. And to kind of go through uh, what we talked about today. There's a lot of different practical use cases for LLMs today, and there are just a few examples. But uh, there's a lot of limitations too. So I feel like uh, once you overcome these limitations, you're able to see uh, the real strengths of using these technologies. Um, and one of the biggest problems that I have is like uh, the the logs from GPT can periodically get wiped. So the best thing I think is uh, save your prompts in the best responses. Experiment with a lot of different ways to try these different prompts, and we can get different results out. And uh, also look at image tech like uh, Mid Journey, Dream Booth the different fine tuning in, in images and we'll be able to see what's up in uh, text and project. And here's a bunch of different topics that I can't really cover today, but uh, if you want to look deeper into it, it they're all pretty interesting. And uh, you can ask me about them later. So uh, thanks for listening and uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free. And, uh, yeah, my Twitter's open. Thanks. This was really interesting. Uh, I particularly like this if you were persistent and got it to write from the third time. There are some, you mentioned the limitations that once overcome, that they can become very useful. How do you hope to overcome those limitations? Are you waiting for, for further development of the core technology or by some additional tooling or by manual uh, going back and forth? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think that uh, the general large language models have a long way to go. Um, even so, basically, the limitation is data, and then beyond that, the limitation is quality of data. So, I think if you uh, train this on quality data, meaning maybe audit data, maybe you make up a bunch of uh, contract bugs, then you can use that data to fine tune or create your own models. And that limits, uh, number one, the hallucinations, and then number two, the usefulness of recognizing the vulnerabilities. Uh, and I think that uh, that's like, uh, uh, I think that uh, there, there's a long way to go in both using uh, the large language models uh, with fine tuning, and then also with additional uh, prompt engineering uh, using techniques such as uh, chain of thought and tree of thought.
and uh, probabilistic uh, search. All right, well, I guess that was last fall, so. <laughs> <laughs>